and the gospel. Jesus says to them, have you never read in the scripture? See, history is reminding us of what was written in the scriptures. The stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, from the Jews, and given to a people producing its fruits, the Gentile. Now, notice that this verse 44, look at what it says. He who falls on this stone, say stone. He who falls on this stone will be what? Broken to pieces. But he on whom it falls, what does it say? He will be crushed. You know, here we have to interpret this. Pastor, what does this mean? Let's go to second letter to Corinthians chapter five, verse 16. I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to be broken. Do you want to be destroyed and broken? Do you think that God, Jesus of Nazareth is a curse? Be careful how you present Jesus of Nazareth. Listen, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth died for me. I have to love that act that took place on the cross of Calvary. You can't come here and say, oh, Jesus of Nazareth is a serpent. That's a curse. No, that wasn't a curse. That was a tremendous blessing. When it's converted to a curse, it's when the stone falls upon you and it breaks you and it destroys you. Jesus of Nazareth. Doesn't it say it? that Jesus himself said, he that falls upon this stone or if this stone falls upon you, you are going to be broken and destroyed. I don't want to be broken and destroyed. I want to be blessed by what Jesus of Nazareth did. But what happens is that Jesus of Nazareth is a two-edged sword. It is a two-sided coin. It's either a blessing to you or it's a curse because it says that it'll break you and destroy you. He that falls upon the stone. And you may say, well, pastor, if the stone is Jesus of Nazareth, I'll just launch myself towards my Lord. You got to be careful how you launch yourself because it can destroy you. You know what God has put to bless you can also destroy you? We regard no one according to the flesh. And look at what is going to avoid the rest of the verse. Even... Though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. You know what that means? That Christ does not want you to know him according to the flesh. Pastor, but what does that mean? Well, I've just finished speaking about you. Did I speak about you, that if you were evil or you were good, we don't want to know you according to the flesh? Well, we're not interested that if Christ was good or that he was a Jew or that he fast. The conduct of your flesh is of no value here. It's the conduct of your spirit. So then, because that stone destroys, it will become a stumbling block to you if you violate the principles. Music 